Hello, my dear children. Namaste and welcome to session two of our class 10 ICSC biology chapter, the circulatory system. This is Ambika, your biology master teacher, right here on this amazing platform of Vedantu. Yes, guys, so as you know, we have started with the unit human physiology. Um, some of you, I understand that you are a little disappointed that the chapter genetics has been deleted from the syllabus because we one reason is we've already done it and many of you say you've already done it in school also and that you put in a lot of efforts to study it. But then uh, trust me, children, whatever you have studied extra doesn't matter. Never consider it as a waste of time. What is done is done. And that too, it's only sharpening your existing knowledge, your existing skills. So never mind. Um, the only good thing I see is that, uh, or rather the main good thing I see with the reduction, further reduction of your syllabus is that you would at least um, have more time to revise the existing chapter. So right now, I think you have about uh, nine chapters in biology and you will have enough time to comfortably revise them over and over again. Okay, so here we go. Let's continue. Um, we've already discussed um, a few basics of this chapter in session one. Today, we shall go ahead and discuss a few more concepts. Right, children? So before we get started, I have something positive to tell you. Let's all start our day with some kind of a positive affirmation. This is one that I wanted to tell you. One you can positively, possibly um, start practicing right from today, tomorrow, or uh, I would suggest start it uh, today itself, although it may not be early in the morning right now. Just tell yourself, keep telling yourself, today I will not stress over things I cannot control. Yes, there may be a lot of situations which are totally out of our control. As long as we are doing our bit of job, our job and um, staying happy and going in the right direction, nothing else to bother about. This applies to me also because quite a number of times, um, I think most of us human beings are like that. What we cannot control, uh, we just tend to unnecessarily stress over those tiny little things which can have a very, very huge negative impact in the long run. So let's just forget all that. Whatever is in my control right now, I will make the best use of it. And that's it. Everything else left to uh, nature to decide okay so let's move ahead and understand about the heart the human heart blood vessels and valves and also about the conduction system of the heart in brief okay so as we know the human heart where would you find it yes the heart um, as we know it is um, a network along with arteries, veins and capillaries. This is basically the gist of your circulatory system and of course the fluid component about which we have seen in the previous session. Right. So where do you find the heart? In the thoracic cavity, you find the heart protected by the rib cage. And where exactly? It's placed mostly like roughly in the center. The only thing is that it's apex. It's tilted slightly towards the left. As you can see in this GIF, the apex of the heart is tilted. The tip of the heart basically is tilted slightly towards the left, which is why there is a common misconception that the heart is located fully on the left side. It's not. It's actually in, at the center, but it's slightly tilted to the left. Okay. So this is how the uh, MRI, which is the magnetic resonance imaging of uh, heart would look. Okay. Have a look at this like a the, the real one, it looks like this, just for you to get an idea. And uh, yes, here is the structure of the heart. Simply put, as you must have learned in your lower grades, the human heart is made up of four chambers, two upper chambers called the atria. We also call it auricles. Okay, atria and auricles are one and the same. They are synonymous. Atrium is singular. Atria is plural. Okay, so we have your uh, right atrium. Um, your left atrium and below you have your right ventricle and the left ventricle. Two upper atria and two lower ventricles. Remember children, always whenever you learn the structure of the heart, it's important not to go wrong with the sides of the heart, which is right and which is left. Okay, um, because Remember that you are looking at it like a, a cardiac uh, surgeon or a cardiologist, a heart doctor would look at the heart of his or her patient, okay? Which means the patient's right wouldn't be the same as the doctor's right. The patient is sitting facing you. You are the doctor, 
the uh, image in front of you, whether you are drawing the image or whether you are looking at an image um, on the computer or in your textbook, um, that imagine that to be like the like your patient's heart, which means this is going to be the right atrium. This would be the right ventricle. This would be the left atrium and this would be the left ventricle. Okay. Why do you think we we uh, choose to uh, use both blue and red colors whenever we have to represent the heart, especially of uh, higher chordates, higher animals like human beings? Why is it that we use blue and red? Of course, many of you must be aware that um, it's representing both oxygenated or what we call pure blood and deoxygenated or impure blood as we call it. Okay, um, so you'll understand more about this in this session and in the upcoming session also. So stay with me. Let's go slow and get the basics right. Now, the heart is not just made up of one single type of cells. It's actually a proper organ made of um, many different tissues which function together to form this organ that we call the heart. Right. And the cells which make up these tissues of your heart are of different types. Um, the major ones are fibroblasts, um, atrial cardiomyocytes, endothelial cells, the conduction cells, ventricular cardiomyocytes, smooth muscle cells and so on. Okay, so this is just for you to know, just be aware of these terms. Um, children, wherever you hear the uh, prefix cardio, it would relate to your heart. Wherever you hear the prefix myo, M-Y-O, it would relate to muscles. And C-Y-T-E, sight means cell. Okay, uh, just telling you in case you need to guess the meaning of some complex term in biology. Okay, now coming to the blood vessels. We've seen where the heart is. Um, I told you it's also made up of a network of blood vessels. Rather, your heart along with your blood vessels ensure that every cell of your heart gets proper access to enough oxygenated blood. And what is the blood? What makes it up? I've told you in session one. Okay, so here we go. There are three major types of blood vessels in the human body. Artery and vein to get started with. Arteries are those blood vessels which carry blood away from your heart. Okay, children, so I always say this in my classes, artery, the A for artery stands for away. But away from what? Away from the heart. You must remember that every single artery of your body carries blood away from your heart. Every single vein in your body carries blood towards the heart. Okay. And most arteries of your body carry oxygenated blood. Why do you think so? Because your arteries chiefly carry blood away from the heart, right? Uh, to the rest of your body parts, to all the cells of your body. Which means, what do you think the heart would supply to all the cells of your body? They would actually be supplying oxygenated blood. That's the whole purpose of the blood, right? Oxygenated blood is what your cells of the body need. So your arteries are carrying oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of your body. But there is an exception in this, which I will be telling you. But do remember, most arteries of your uh, body carry oxygenated blood. And most veins of your body carry deoxygenated blood because they are functioning in such a manner that they are carrying blood away from your tissues and your cells back into your heart, draining it back into your heart. Okay. But again, here also there is an exception, which I will be telling you in a bit. Okay, so in terms of oxygenation and deoxygenation, as I told you, there is one exception. But the universal rule is that every single artery without exception carries blood away from the heart. Every single vein without exception carries blood towards the heart. Whether it's oxygenated or deoxygenated is what you will understand better once I have told you about the exceptions. Okay, but um, look at the structure, children, of the artery and the vein. If you observe it, um, like one section of the artery and a section of the vein, you would see that the arteries are actually much more thicker walled. They've got a thicker muscular layer as compared to the veins, the muscle layer. Compare the thickness of the two. This is because arteries are carrying blood away from the heart. So they have to be under very high pressure. This blood is flowing under very high pressure because from that one single organ which is there in your thoracic cavity at the top of your body, somewhere close to the top of your body, just by one contraction of it, blood is getting pumped to all your trillion cells in your body. 
which means blood is flowing under such a high pressure. To be able to withstand that pressure, arteries have been provided with thicker muscle layers. Okay, uh, elastic layer also, uh, which is there additionally. Um, and of course, there are inner layers also for both of them. One more thing you need to notice, children, is that veins, uh, why, of course, they need to withstand pressure, but then because they are carrying blood from the uh, cells and tissues back into your heart, which means they're carrying deoxygenated blood, um, if you compare it to the function of the arteries, function of vein is probably like a, like a, 25% less important job. Of course, it's very important, but compared to the arteries, perhaps like maybe around 10, 20% less important, which is why the pressure that vein walls have to withstand is actually a little less than uh, the pressure that arterial walls have to withstand because it's flowing from your uh, cells back into your heart. It's not from one single point that the vein is, that the veins are carrying blood. So the pressure is relatively lesser in the veins because of which they have a thinner muscle layer but then there is one risk because veins carry blood under a relatively low speed and pressure there is a bit of chance that um, this blood can accidentally flow in the backward direction for instance if my blood if some of my veins are carrying blood from my uh, foot from my feet to my heart it's flowing at a relatively slow uh, pace or at a low pressure uh, right so when it's flowing from this towards the heart because it's under low pressure there is a chance that instead of going from down to up it may tend to go in the backward direction because speed is not so good pressure is not so high in order to avoid that back flow of blood veins are provided with what we call valves okay arteries rather are not provided with valves because it's already under very high pressure and that's self-sufficient. A backflow of blood in a normal healthy artery is not uh, possible. It doesn't normally occur. Okay, so this is about uh, the difference in structure between arteries and veins. It's not just one artery and one vein that's there in your body. Artery is actually branch out to form arterioles, smaller branches. Okay, and veins branch out further to form uh, venules. Okay, and arterioles branch out further into smaller and smaller blood vessels, which we call capillaries. Capillaries are what ultimately deliver nutrients and oxygen to each and every cell and each and every tissue of the body. Okay, so let's understand um, capillaries now. Arteries, as I told you, branch out uh, into arterioles and arterioles further branch out to form what is capillaries. Capillaries are what directly will be in touch with your cells because of which the walls of capillaries are very, very thin. So uh, it's so thin that through simple diffusion itself, gases can be exchanged between a capillary and a cell of your body um, and all kinds of exchange can easily occur because of this thin wall in the capillary. And then, uh, yes, it lies in between arteries and veins because um, capillaries, while they also deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells of your body, they also uh, take away, they also, a set of capillaries also carry away whatever your cells don't need. Okay, so they act as the delivery service. They also act as the pickup service, like a collector service, a collection service rather, uh, wherein whatever the cells of your body don't require, like the carbon dioxide or any metabolic waste products, capillaries collect them. They join together to form venules and venules join together to form veins. Okay, and veins deliver it back into your heart. Okay, so capillaries, as uh, it mentions here, helps in exchange of nutrients, ions and gases, or rather it helps in delivery of nutrients, ions and gases to every single cell of your body. Okay, and here is a uh, comparison of all the three, the sections of all the three. Okay, uh, artery, vein and capillary, just for your reference, because uh, there is a chance I have seen some ICC question papers in the past year in section B they might give you like um, a, a, a diagram which compares an artery and a vein they may not tell you the name of uh, what kind of a blood vessel it is but they may ask you questions based on that okay so it can come as a five mark question possibly it can come um, so yes arteries have a thicker wall veins have a 
thin layer of muscles and elastic fibers capillaries are extremely thin um, they are once one cell layer in thickness that's it such a thin layer is what capillaries have and then um, arteries because they have a thick wall the lumen or the hollow space inside is much smaller if you look at the diameter here compared to the diameter of a vein diameter of the lumen of artery is much lesser than the diameter of the lumen of a vein this is because of the difference in thickness of the walls also okay and then um, yes remember the uh, functions also arteries carry blood away from the heart veins carry towards the heart capillaries are in touch with every single cell and tissue of your body okay now coming to the exception that i told you i told you most arteries in your body carry uh, oxygenated blood except one most veins in your body carry deoxygenated blood except one what are those exceptions it is your pulmonary artery and vein children always remember whenever you hear the term pulmonary it refers to lungs something to do with the lungs or related structures okay so what do you think it will be when i say pulmonary artery artery i told you carries blood away from the heart so when i tell you pulmonary artery what do you think it is and i told you pulmonary is lungs getting that much of hint what do you think pulmonary artery does it actually carries blood from the heart away from the heart towards your lungs pulmonary vein does um, the opposite which is bringing blood from your lungs towards your heart you can observe them here the pulmonary artery this uh, purple color t shaped structure here is representing your pulmonary artery okay and your pulmonary vein as i told you brings in oxygenated blood from the lungs into your heart okay pulmonary artery is branching out to carry blood to the lungs pulmonary veins are through its branches bringing oxygenated blood into your heart so pulmonary artery why do you think uh, heart would even send um, blood through a special uh, blood vessel to the lungs why not the same blood vessel that all other uh, tissues get blood through okay so this is one big question actually it is the aorta which is the chief blood vessel the chief artery in your body which pumps oxygenated blood to all the cells of your body but then your lungs have a separate pathway which is what the pulmonary artery is this is important because the lungs have something which your heart doesn't have and that is oxygen because when you inhale oxygen remember oxygen um, goes into your alveoli or air sacs and your air sacs <coughs> are filled with uh, or rather supplied richly with blood capillaries so when your pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from your heart to the lungs it is because the pulmonary artery is taking deoxygenated blood to the heart asking the lungs for oxygen okay so pulmonary arteries carry deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs lungs give it oxygen or rather lungs oxygenate that blood and that oxygenated blood is carried by your pulmonary vein back into your heart and this oxygenated blood is pumped by your aorta to all the rest of your body cells this is how it occurs not to worry too much children because we will be learning uh, circulation the phenomenon of circulation the process of circulation well in detail in the next session today just get a basic understanding of the heart the blood vessels what each type of blood vessel does and all of them okay so observe here once children uh, there is the right atrium the right ventricle left atrium the left ventricle right and you can see that the heart is protected covered by a double membrane called the pericardium the two layers of the pericardium have a sort of fluid in between them uh, if these are representing the two layers of the pericardium there is a sort of fluid in between them which acts like a shock absorber to protect your heart okay this is about the pericardium and yes all the other blood vessels i've told you arteries the main artery the biggest artery of your body being the aorta and um, the veins the chief vein which carries deoxygenated blood from all your body parts back into your heart is called the vena cava 
superior vena cava and inferior vena cava actually okay superior vena cava brings in deoxygenated blood from upper parts of your body basically parts which are above your heart your head your neck shoulders and all those regions inferior vena cava brings in deoxygenated blood from your lower body parts into your heart okay and then this deoxygenated blood by pumping of the right ventricle of the ventricles rather enter through the pulmonary artery into your lungs lungs oxygenate this the pulmonary vein brings back that oxygenated blood into the left atrium this enters left ventricle contraction of the left ventricle pumps it into the aorta the aorta ensures that through its branches every cell and tissue of your body gets oxygenated blood okay children so as simple as that um, let's uh, move ahead i just wanted to give you a little better insight into pulmonary circulation um, which is the circulation the pathway of circulation between your heart and lungs as you can see this is how the pulmonary artery and your pulmonary veins function pulmonary artery carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs pulmonary veins carrying oxygenated blood from the lung into your heart okay all right so um yes one more question that uh, you might probably be wondering about okay the heart is there to pump blood to all parts of the body and um, it also with the help of veins it collects blood from different parts of the body so how does the heart cells themselves get um, oxygenated blood this is why coronary arteries have been provided coronary arteries are those arteries which provide oxygenated blood to the cells of your heart so aorta as you can see is the major artery which pumps blood to all the cells of your body so from the aorta one branch goes further and further branches out into the walls of the heart itself ensuring that oxygenated blood enters into every cell of your heart likewise coronary veins are also there to collect deoxygenated blood from these heart cells and empty them into the right atrium and the cycle continues just like any other uh, any other part of your body they also have a separate set of uh, like a dedicated set of arteries and veins to take care of this function okay children so i have told you a lot about heart and the blood vessels um, and let's now quickly check how much of it you are able to recall okay the two upper chambers of the heart are called atria ventricles portal system pulmonary system okay your time starts now and your time ends in 3 2 1 go okay atria are the upper chambers of the heart now the major artery which emerges from heart is termed as dash the major artery i'm sure you guys know this is it the superior vena cava inferior vena cava aorta or the pulmonary artery and your time is up the answer is aorta yes the biggest or the uh, the most important artery that emerges from the heart dash carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs for the purpose of oxygenation when a question like this is given remember what carries blood away from the heart okay is it a vein or is it an artery or is it something else away from the heart and if it is to the lung there is a special term that's used is it among these or is it none of these pulmonary vein pulmonary artery coronary artery none of these and your time is up the answer is pulmonary artery okay and well done children there's a happy heart that's there and dancing for you congratulating you now children before we move on let's take a very quick break and i have to tell you something very very useful and very very important in this break which is about problems which most of you face in today's online um, way of education like completely i think anything and everything in the world has become online now um, especially in this year of uh, the pandemic so yes many of our children say that they have a lot of unanswered doubts 
our teachers are always not accessible, not always available. We have a lot of doubts which are left unanswered. Um, we don't have proper notes because back in school, teachers used to take care of all this and even used to check our notes sometimes. But now we don't have proper notes. We are unable to make our own notes without proper guidance. Tests and assignments may be not systematically happening because obviously the setup is very different online and offline. Competitive exam preparation may be more of a challenge for many of you. Choice of schedule, timings and all of that. You may have siblings at home um, who may have online classes at the same time, but you may not have more than um, one computer or one phone. Or, like problem of sharing gadgets can become a problem because there's not much choice of schedule. Choice of language, again, some of you may want to learn only in Hindi, some of you may want to learn only in English, or maybe a mix of English and your uh, mother tongue, or whatever it may be. This is also a problem. But children, not to worry at all, because at Vedanto, we've got all of these problems solved for you. We have a highly dedicated team of teachers and um, a lot of other experts, academic experts, who always work together to ensure that your studies never get interrupted because we understand the student community has been majorly affected because of this pandemic right so in addition to solving these problems we have been designing our courses um, in terms of giving you a lot more bonuses also unlimited live classes so many micro courses and crash courses performance reports personalized attention and what not so many of this and uh, what you have to do is to know more details, just visit vdnt.in slash ytpro because I may not be able to give you every single minute details and probably like the multiple options that may be available out there. But of course, I can give you a basic guidance here. Uh, when you visit this, you will be asked to choose your grade. Okay. So for you guys, I'm guessing it's going to be a uh, grade 10. Okay or choose it accordingly and you will have to select your target so uh, say for instance it's going to be ICSE 2021 or anything else that uh, you belong to then you can check out the details I've told you many of them but there are a lot more features which are mentioned here in the courses which we call Vedantu Pro okay so uh, then what do you do click on the button get subscription subscription is what we call it so you can either subscribe for one month three months or six months there are multiple options available out there, but here we have the major plans described for you. Um, the one month of pro subscription would normally cost you 2,699 children, okay, for one full month of unlimited access to all these features that I have told you. But right now we have an offer for you, which is application of a coupon code AMBPRO, okay. If you apply this coupon code, your amount payable gets reduced to 2,294.15. Okay, from 2699, it becomes 2294. Okay, then for three months, if you want to be tension free and leave everything to Vedantu, uh, you can subscribe for three months, uh, wherein your amount payable <coughs> normally is 6999, whereas the same code, the uh, same coupon code AMBPRO reduces it to. 5949, 5949.15, okay, 6999 to 5949, okay, so um, definitely I think it's a good deal because this is for three months together of unlimited access. Even better, we also have you covered for the next six months, which means roughly for the next, uh, the remaining part of your academic year, because till March you can be tension free, almost till the end of the academic year, wherein um, you get unlimited access to all of these for the next six months. Um, talking about the amount, it's normally 11,499, but AMBPRO can reduce it to 9774.15, 9774.15. Some of you may be wondering, is it actually worth so much? Children, I am not here to force you. I'm not here to pressurize you on anything. But as a teacher, as a parent myself, I just wanted to ensure that you guys have enough and proper access to all good quality education that Vedantu and the team uh, has been trying to come up with. So I leave it completely to you. This is the total amount uh, that is payable, the total amount which amounts for a six month subscription using this coupon code AMBPRO. So whether or not it is pocket friendly for you, uh, it's up to you to decide. What you can do is it's my suggestion that you can divide the total amount payable by the total number of sessions that you would have access to in these six months. 
okay and find out that will give you the per session cost okay once you have come up to that math i'm sure you will realize that this is one of the most budget friendly one of the most pocket friendly courses out there okay try this out do not just waste it or do not just um, leave it um, you know unnoticed or just ignore it like that it's my personal suggestion okay guys then it's totally up to you and your parents to together decide okay and now we move ahead and continue learning about the next part of the heart which is very very important the valves of the heart i told you uh, valves are provided uh, in the veins of course uh, as far as blood vessels are concerned arteries don't have valves but veins do have valves which help in backflow of blood likewise in your heart also between the upper and lower chambers there are valves as you can see in this junction from atrium to ventricle in that junction there are valves provided to ensure that blood doesn't flow from ventricles to atria it should always flow from atria to ventricles and ventricles to outside of your heart it should never be in this direction okay ventricle to atria no that's a wrong direction in order to ensure that this correct direction is followed your heart has been provided with valves okay there are uh, four major types of valves that we must know um two of them are between atria and ventricles between your let me mark it out for your children this is your left atrium this is your left ventricle this is your right atrium and your uh, right ventricle okay between your left atrium and left ventricle there is a valve which is called the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve okay bicuspid valve or mitral valve bm okay you can remember it as lbl left uh, atrium bicuspid valve left ventricle in case uh, you are confused whether mitral valve is another name for bicuspid or tricuspid which is on the other side just remember bm together i remember it is uh, bangalore metropolitan whatever you can remember it as could be anything anything very crazy that you will definitely not forget okay keep some kind of a code so that you are not confused um and then between right atrium and right ventricle the valve is tricuspid valve so remember it is r t r okay r t office or uh, something like that and here l b l l b w uh, if you are a cricket fan i think you will easily remember it like that i'm telling you that you mustn't get mixed up with uh, tricuspid and bicuspid because at the time of your exam you may be asked this as a one mark question name the valve um, which protects the uh, which ensures that there is no backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the uh, from the right between right auricle and right ventricle if there is a question like that you shouldn't get confused whether it's tricuspid or bicuspid use all the codes possible rtr lbl and in case you have a confusion between mitral valve and bicuspid valve uh, or a tricuspid all these three mitral and bicuspid come together because they are synonymous as i told you bangalore metropolitan or anything else as i said okay children then these are the two major valves tricuspid and bicuspid between your atria and ventricles there are two more valves which we call semi lunar valves semi lunar does it strike any bells does it uh, seem familiar to you in any way semi lunar valves lunar something to do with the moon right so because their shape is something like a half moon shape they are called semi lunar valves okay and there are two major semi lunar valves in your heart one is at the junction between your right ventricle and the pulmonary artery in this point okay between right ventricle and the pulmonary artery you find the pulmonary semi lunar valve okay and in between the left ventricle and aorta which is this part you find the aortic semi lunar valve okay so aortic semi lunar valve aortic uh, pulmonary sorry uh, aortic semi lunar valve pulmonary semi lunar valve bicuspid or mitral valve tricuspid valve know where exactly they come in the heart okay children and here we go this is an outline of circulation i just thought of putting it here for you so that uh, you get some basic idea and are prepared before we move on to the uh, complexities of these in the upcoming session trust me children if you are thorough with whatever we have discussed today this is going to be super easy for you when we discuss in session 3 of this chapter okay um, i told you the heart 
and lungs have a separate pathway which is called the pulmonary circuit. The heart and the rest of your body have a, a pathway which we call systemic circuit. Okay, so these two together form the overall um, double circulation process as we call it in the human body. Okay, so we learn more about this in the upcoming session for the, uh, for the time being. Let's just forget this and come to another concept which is conduction of impulse in the human heart. What is it? What is, how does the heart conduct its impulses? So for this, the heart is actually a self-excitatory organ. Uh, it doesn't need um, any kind of external help. You don't have to voluntarily tell your heart, okay, beat, 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 beat. Imagine if you had to do it, oh my goodness, poor heart and poor rest of your body. My goodness, I can't even imagine. Which is why it's always considered to be the most self-motivated and um, self-excitatory uh, uh, organ of your body because it keeps working non-stop. From the moment you are uh, formed, uh, your organs are formed when you're inside your mother's uh, uterus until the point of death this is an organ that keeps functioning to support you to support your life right we must respect it so how does it manage to do this what is its secret so the heart is telling us about its secret some basics of its secrets which is there is a bundle of muscle fibers in the right atrium which is called sinoatrial node or the sa node this actually is where all the impulses originate in the heart okay so we call it the pacemaker of the heart okay pacemaker of the heart is your SA node and then there is also another uh, bundle of uh, muscle tissue at the bottom of your right atrium which is called AV node atrioventricular node so from the right ear from the SA node its signals actually spread to the AV node and from there it spreads to a set of uh, branches which is called bundle of His or the His bundle. Okay, And that divides further into many many finer branches which are called Purkinje fibers which ensure that these impulses are transmitted throughout your heart walls, throughout every cell of your heart. Okay, So SA node AB node, his bundle um, and its branches and then the Purkinje fibers. What is the name uh, Purkinje to do with uh, here? Well, it's simply put, it's named after the person who discovered it. Okay, so here we go. I've put this also here for your reference so that you don't get confused later on when you sit down for a self-study session. Um, sinoatrial node, electrical impulses spread from the sinus node or the sinoatrial node throughout the left and right atria, causing the atria to contract and expelling its volume of blood into the ventricles. When the atria contract, the blood flows into the ventricles, right? Then electrical impulse spreads from bundle branches his bundle okay or the bundle of his as we call it from a bundle branches throughout the left and right ventricles which causes the ventricles to contract and this would force the blood to be expelled out of the heart into the general body circulation okay this is how it carries out this process and uh, here we go have a look at this for you to be able to imagine how it occurs, how the signal spread, okay? This is how further and further from the AV node, it's spreading further into bundle of His and the Purkinje fibers. Once again, have a look at the children. Yes, there. Starts with the SA node, which is called the pacemaker of the heart. Yes, SA node is there. Spreads from SA node to the AV node, from the AV node to the His bundle or bundle of His and its branches and then to the Purkinje fibers, ensuring that it spreads throughout your heart. Okay, and now the heart sounds. If you just uh, listen to your heart uh, through a stethoscope, if you have ever done this, if you ever have uh, got a chance to listen to your heart sounds through a stethoscope, um, you might have noticed that it causes a la da la da sort of sound. This is exactly how we officially call it also, the lub sound and the dub sound. The lub sound is caused by closure of the atrioventricular valves. When these valves close, which is when your ventricles are filled with blood, AV valves close. Closure of AV valves causes the sound lub. Closure of 
semi lunar valves which are the valves which lead out of the heart at the entrance of the uh, pulmonary artery and at the entrance of the aorta i've told you that closure of the semi lunar valve causes the dub sound okay lub dub remember when they are caused also okay children so i think we have done enough justice to understanding all the major aspects aspects of the human heart the heart blood vessels um, the conduction system the valves and of course the uh, sounds also that the uh, heartbeat produces let's quickly answer a couple of questions before we wind up for the day dash is called as the natural pacemaker of the heart yes and your time is up because i just told you this a couple of minutes back sa node or the sinoatrial node yes and now dash provides blood supply to the cells of the heart what do you think is it the pulmonary vein pulmonary artery coronary artery or none of these and your time is up the answer is coronary artery and what carries uh, blood from the heart cells back into the right atrium that would be the coronary veins okay now dash are the blood vessels which have valves in them artery capillaries veins none of these okay and your time is up the answer is veins yes because blood flows under a uh, low pressure while they are through the veins and very well done children i think the heart is looking a lot more happy um and it's encouraging us to go ahead and recall and be proud of the fact that we now know the heart blood vessels and valves and the conduction system of the heart uh, and children before i give you the homework question let me remind you remember to visit vdnt.in/ytpro apply the coupon code ambpro okay here is my homework for you today uh, why do veins have valves while arteries don't why is it so we have explained it today let's see how many of you can uh, reproduce it in your own words children whenever you give me these answers um, i'm not necessarily looking for a very very formal uh, english kind of answer it can be in simple language it can be in your own words as long as the message is conveyed rightly and clearly i don't care about anything else okay this is as far as i am concerned in the comment section but of course for your exam for your public exam you will be expected to write in very good language like decent uh, bookish sort of language so that's completely up to you to get practice with children if you have enjoyed the session and you found it useful please 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 do remember to hit the like button right now because that's the best way of telling me right that uh, ma'am this was useful for us so please don't uh, forget to hit the like button please do share it with all your friends be it your uh, cbse 10 friends icse 10 friends or um, even your 11th and 12th uh, neat aspirant friends because it's a basic concept and all of you biology students must know this well in detail and i've gone very slowly i think um, we've done enough justice to understanding the basics of the heart as i told you upcoming session will be about circulation okay so stay with me in that also and uh, please do subscribe to the channel vedantu 9th and 10th english in case you haven't done it yet because as you know we keep working very hard as much as possible um uh, yes at least at the end of every chapter we come uh, we try coming live uh, especially to give you a menti quiz because that's what many of you are very interested in right um and even if not uh, the menti quiz as much as possible we try and ensure that your entire syllabus is covered because it's very important for you and this is important for everyone every child across the country so do spread word about this also so that everyone can certainly benefit from uh, what's happening on this channel right children so until we meet again stay safe take care take care of everyone around you and stay happy bye bye